All right. We'll see we're live here. Um, I'll get started in just a second. And uh, we'll wait for a couple folks to join in. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Looks like the, uh, the flux capacitor is fluxing there. Very good. All right. Um, well, welcome. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a bunch of sort of small stuff, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of littler things here and um, kind of a neat little artifacts for you. So let's dive right in. Let's do it. Um, okay. So the first thing I want to show you is this. Okay. And let me hold this up to you. You know, this is very, very interesting. Um, we'll take a look. Let me pass it in front of the camera so you can take a look here. And let me turn it back around this side and see if anyone's uh, guessing what this could actually be. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Take it out. All right, so I'll tell you what this is. Uh, this belonged to Elizabeth Monroe, and this is actually a memo pad. Um, <laughs> What am I talking about? Well, this is sort of a memo pad of, uh, of her time period, um, meaning that this is actually slabs of ivory, okay? So if you look really closely, you can see that it's actually ivory. It has sort of that wavy kind of pattern that goes into ivory that you see, and it's different than bone. And I think I've said this before, but, you know, the ivory is different from bone. The bone would be, you know, be usually a little bit whiter, um, and the bone you would see tiny little... Uh, if you look really closely, you see tiny little holes, porous holes in the in the uh, in the um, the surface. But this does that's not the case with ivory. And you see, there's uh, actually silver on the front here. And if you look closely, you can actually see. Let me put this out here. The names uh, of the the days. You can actually see days written on there, right? You have Tuesday, Wednesday, all that sort of thing. So yeah, <laughs> the original sticky note on her. That's right. Um, and what they would do is they would actually take, uh, you know, pieces of graphite, you know, pencil gra graphite or charcoal or something like that. And they would write on here little notes to, you know, the little reminders and things like that. And it actually does fold up and, you know, you can um, you know, fold it up here a little bit really carefully and it actually will clasp. And you can attach this to a chain. Sometimes you would see these on chains sometimes. Um, actually, I don't know if this one does. But... Um, you can see sometimes in, if you look in portraits back in the day, um, if you look closely, you could see that the, the women would have these chains hanging down um, from their dresses. And, you know, sometimes they would have things like this attached to them or, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, the sayers and things like that that would be attached to them. So that's what that is. And another kind of cool hint is that if you ever come across one of these, like at an antique store or something like that, look really carefully. And a lot of times you'll see that the graphite, uh, you can still see the notes that are written on the graphite because they're not really easily taken off. So um, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So there you go. The, uh, the iPad of the, um, of the, of the 1900s, um, you know, <laughs> there, there it is. So once again, that's a, a memo pad that belonged to Elizabeth Monroe before our fanciness. All right. Um, something else I'm going to show you this, and this is kind of interesting. Look at this big sucker, okay? I'm going to hold this up to you. Look at that. That's a big old key. Uh, does this does this open the key to Narnia? Um, well, maybe. It, it might, actually. We never really tried it. In fact, I don't know if anyone, would, anyone has old keys. Maybe you could try opening up to Narnia. Um, but this is one of those things where in the museum world it's kind of interesting because you get the, the, the family legend story, you know. You hear that a lot. According to family legend. Um... I never discount that because sometimes it's true, you know, sometimes it's not true at all, but sometimes there's sort of a happy medium in between um, where the, what the family legend says it is and what it actually is. You know, and don't get me wrong, a lot of times it's, it's not true at all. There's no basis in fact, but I never discount it when someone brings something in and says that that's what it is uh, because, um, you know, you never know. And it's illogical to discount possible data. Um, so if you look closely, this, this is a big key, right? So according to family tradition, this key opened the White House, okay? This was the front door to the White House. So if that's true, I mean, it's certainly period. You know, it, it, it has the, the right period. Um, you know, it's hand-forged, handmade, obviously. Um, it's very, very interesting looking. Um, so whether it's true or not, you know, it's pure iron. 
whether it's true or not, you know, we don't really know, but it was passed down through the family and in the family, and, and I'm talking about the Monroe descendants, and, you know, according to family tradition, it opened White House. So this possibly is the key that opened the White House, the front door, the president's house. Yeah, so there it is. Um, make with it as you will. Okay, so I'm going to show you something else here. Uh, let's see if I can find... Here we go. Now, let me hold this up. Really close. Okay, there's an old glass bottle, right? <laughs> they have these old bottles. Um, I just wanted to show you this real quick. I'm not going to get really into this. I'll get it, I'll get more into glass making at another time. But it's sort of an interesting. You 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 see these bottles sometimes discarded in old piles and things, and usually busted up and everything. So this one's actually fairly intact. It's, it does have this big cutout hole here. Um, and there's a seal, actually. And I could, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in a different in a different section because there's a little bit more to it. But I just wanted to show you this real quick. He's gonna point across saying, you know, this old glass, you know, hand blown, right? These these handmade glass. And um, you know, you see the different color, all these greens and everything with the process. But it's kind of cool if you come across these, you know, you see these in these old antique stores and everything, or if you have any of these, these families, I just wanted to, to, to show to you because I wanted to let you know to hold on to them because they actually, they're, they're a little bit rare. You don't see them as much on these days, you know, because they, they break over time, obviously. So if you see one in, uh, in, in your family or in circulation, hold off, hold on to it. And again, um, hold that thought because I'll talk about more about that at a different section. Um, okay. So then... This is something that I wanted to show you, okay? There is a dessert service plate, and I'm gonna hold this up, it's really close, and I wanted to show you this because, you know, when you see things like this today, okay, you think, oh, it's no big deal, right? They mass manufacture these things, you know, tons, you know, what's the big deal? You know, they, they print out, the, they have transfer printing, they print it out and all this sort of thing. So no big deal, but what's cool about this is that this is all handmade and hand-painted. I mean, it's an amazing, it's an amazing, amazing piece. Um, you know, and I'll show you a different part of it. Actually, I have it over here. So if you excuse me for one second, I'm going to pull this over. All right. This is the same part of the same set. And here it is. And this is a compote, or a compote, excuse me. I'm bumping my camera on. Aren't I? This is a compote. Um, and this was used to hold it here. I'll hold it up really, really close. Um, you know, it's used to display uh, a fresh fruit, sweet mints, petite fours, fruit salads, things like this. Um, and so the, you see it's sort of elevated, right? You know, it's got that. And so that's what that is. And it's part of the same set that this is, this right here. And I wanted to show you this because the craftsmanship of it. Um, you know, what I was talking about before, okay? You know, I, sorry, I get excited about it, but what I was talking about before is, you know, every today, today it's all mass manufactured and it's no, not that quite a big of a deal. But I, what I did was I blew it up. I took my nerd magnifying lens and I blew up the picture of that, of that, uh, that plate, that single plate. And look at this, okay? Look at that. That is all hand painted. I know it's not a very, I, it's probably hard to see with the camera. But it's, it's all hand painted. So that's in itself is a work of art, right? I mean, that in itself is a painting and it's on a plate. It's on, <laughs> it's on a dessert plate that was used. Um, the dessert plate, by the way, originally they thought, again, that family, originally they thought that it belonged to James Monroe, but actually, um, you know, a, a sister organization of us, uh, of ours, Highland, found a piece of it. And um, here, I'll hold this up. And it actually was marked Louis Andre, which makes it, um, later in the 1800s, uh, about 1830s, so it likely belonged to um, uh, it likely belonged to uh, Mariah, the, the daughter of James Rose. So this plate was in a family, but it likely belonged to the daughter. So again, I'll hold this up, and it's its own piece. And what they would do is they would hand paint. Okay, so. Whenever they would fire it up, they, they would actually, they would make the initial shape, okay? They would have someone that would make the initial shape, um, and sometimes they would mold this. This one actually looks like it may have been molded. Um, and so they would, they would pour it into the mold, in the, the porcelain, 
and then you know they would fire the body piece so that the piece itself was was solid and then um you know then they would apply the glazes and they would they would do the, the painting you know sometimes you would see the paint um over it and then sometimes under they would have the underglaze they call it and then sometimes over but anyway i just want to show you and let me show you the painting that's on this one so i'll hold it up closer and so I just think that is spectacular. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. Think about that. Like it just all oh, and we take it for granted. You know, we look at these pieces, and there, there's hundreds and hundreds of China, China porcelain pieces out there, hundreds of them, and they're you know they're painted by these artists, the incredible artists. We take it for granted, and it's right there. It's art right there. Um, I don't know. Food for thought. Something to think about. And so the last thing I wanted to show you is this little tiny knickknack. There. There it is. Look at this. Okay. So this is a snuff box. Okay. And I'll hold it up. I'll actually open it up here. There it is. It's a snuff box. What is a snuff box? Well, it's kind of exactly what you think of it as. Um, they would actually pinch, they would have dried tobacco and this belonged to James Monroe. And they would have dried tobacco in there in little tiny powder form, and they would sniff it. You know, they pinch it, <laughs> and they would sniff it. And um, you know, it, it wasn't just uh, men that would do it. You know, ladies would do it too. And so you would see these little boxes everywhere. And a lot of these, um, you know, Monroe had a bunch of these. Um, and so it's sort of one of those things that you don't really see a lot anymore. But they still have snuff, right? But you don't see a whole lot of snuff boxes in in this sense. Um, I think they, you know, they have a mass manufactured now, so you can just kind of carry them with you. <laughs> so there, <laughs> look at this little tiny snuff box. And what's really cool about it is if you look really carefully, look at the detail on that, because I uh, hope you can see it with the camera. They have little inlays, and that's little ivory inlays into the snuff box. And it looks like this is made out of horn or tortoise shell. And it's got these little hinges on the back. Um, and you see that this little car device and everything, something fancy, something to sort of carry around with you. Um, you know, again, it's sort of like, in a sense, someone having a Rolex now, you know, it's just a little bit of a status symbol if you had a sort of a nice box to carry around with you and take it out. And then they would like pinch and, and it's different from chewing tobacco. Okay. So these are not chewing tobacco holders, you know, where, where the, the leaves are a little bit bigger. They don't ground them into powder and they're going to be a little bit moister and they would chew it. That's different. Okay. Um, so this is actually um, a snuff box in, in where they would pinch it and they would sniff it nasally. So there you go. <laughs> Little tiny knickknacks. Um, okay, so again, I just wanted to show you some little tiny things today. And um, I appreciate you joining in. Let me, uh, let me just um, sort of recap for folks that are just joining in. Once again, here is a memo pad that belonged to Elizabeth Monroe and it's made out of ivory. And it's got the days of the weeks on here. So um, so it, you got to flex however you can. That's actually true. Um, so, and you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they would write, you know, with graphite, um, you know, little pencils or, or pieces of charcoal. They would write their little notes on there. And a lot of times, and they would stay on there for a good little while until these are, uh, until they're removed. And the other thing I show you here is that according to family tradition, this is the key to the White House. This was passed down through the family and down to the descendants, and they say that this is the key to the White House. Whether it's true or not, we don't have a smoking gun to let us know if it is, but, you know, it's period, and it's a big old key. <laughs> so, I mean, it possibly is. So there's that. And then again, I wanted to show you these amazing detail on these, on these, on these dessert services. Um, and I'll show you the close-up of that again real quick. Just amazing detail on that plate service and just beautiful works of art. And that is what I have to show you today. So thank you so much for joining in. Again, if you have a moment just to press the share button down there, um, that would be great. And I will see you in uh, two weeks. Bye-bye.